This conference will now be recorded. Hi friends, so in this Azure Databricks master program, so this is our fifth session. In this fifth session, we are going to see how we can create Databricks community workspace. So as we discussed, all the time we are not going to use Azure Databricks. So for this learning purpose, what we are going to do is whatever is possible, most of the things we will try to complete in, complete it in Databricks community and wherever we need uh, Azure, uh, like whatever we cannot do in Databricks community, those things we will try to do it in from the Azure Databricks. Okay, because if you want to use Azure Databricks, you need to have a subscription. We have discussed what is subscription, right? So all the buildings will be added to the subscription, meaning you need to make the payments if you are going to use Azure Databricks. So that's why you, uh, if, you, if you compare with uh, Azure Databricks and uh, if you compare Databricks and uh, Azure Databricks and Databricks community, uh, Databricks community is free and Azure Databricks, you need to make a payment. So that's why we will try to use uh, this Databricks community for whatever we can use and whatever we cannot do in the Databricks community, those things we will try to do it from Azure Databricks. Okay, so that's why in today's session, we will see how we can create Databricks community workspace. So in this today's session, we will learn how to create Databricks community workspace and a quick tour of Databricks community workspace. So what all things we have in Databricks community workspace, then we will see different Databricks run times. So we already have seen, but we will see once again, because we are going to create a cluster inside Databricks community. Next, we will see types of clusters available in Databricks. So what all, what are the different types of clusters available in Azure Databricks we have seen? but what are the different clusters available in Databricks community we will discuss. And then we will see create and configuring clusters in Databricks. So we will see in Databricks community how we can create cluster. Then we will see the difference between Azure Databricks and the Databricks community. So what all the differences we have. So when we need to go for Azure Databricks, when we need to go for Databricks community. One thing is clear for our production or for our real-time environment, we need to use Azure Databricks. But when you are in learning stage, most of the time you can go with the Databricks community and wherever you want to practice uh, some kind of things where Databricks will not work. Example, for scheduling jobs. Uh, you cannot schedule jobs in Databricks community. You want to implement auto-scaling. You cannot implement auto-scaling in Databricks community. Okay, you want to configure some termination time. Okay, so those all things are not possible in Databricks community. Okay, so those things we will see. Okay, let me start with how to create Databricks community. Okay, so use below URL. Yes, please tell me. Do we have a driver and a worker node in community, uh, uh, Malaya? No, no. So all those things we will discuss. So okay. we have, we cannot configure our cluster as well because we just have few options. So the fixed size of uh, server they are going to give for free. Okay, only one server they will give that is fixed size. It's a 15 GB uh, memory and uh, it will have two cores. So such type of server you will get it. So you need to use this particular server to execute all your code. You will not, you will not have a worker nodes, driver nodes, all those things here. You will have only one driver node here. Okay, you will not have any worker nodes. Worker nodes are zero. You will have single driver node. So that entire uh, work will be delivered by your driver node in Databricks community. Okay. Clear, Sinti? Yes, Malaya. Yeah. Malaya, just one question. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. I mean, like, as you said, we are not using the Databricks community edition in the production, right? We will use only Azure Databricks. Yes, yes. So why can't we continue with the Azure Databricks instead of the community? It, we know we can practice that in the Databricks community edition, but it will be good because we'll have the yes. worker notes and the, yeah. Yeah, so we am going with the Databricks community workspace because most of the people, they don't have any idea on Azure services, right? So they don't know how to create Azure account, how to create a free tier subscription or whatever subscription. And even they don't know how to log in into the portal to create Azure Databricks. So for those people, they want to get started with Azure Databricks, right? So whoever want to get started with Azure Databricks, they can first try to learn Databricks. They can learn all the Databricks related concepts from the Databricks community edition. 
So once they learn, they can just copy paste into Azure Databricks once they get the opportunity to create Azure Databricks. So this is what I am trying to tell you is whatever you are do, going to do in Azure Databricks, same things you are going to do in a Databricks community also. But some things are not possible in Databricks community. Those things we will go to Azure Databricks and we will try to do. Okay, but even if you learn concepts from Databricks community, okay, there won't be any difference. You can copy paste this script into Azure Databricks and you can execute, you'll get same result. Okay. So actually, that's Malaya, I have one plan, uh, Ram, I know, uh, I mean, uh, if everyone agree, we can do that one. So we can purchase this uh, license, you know, sorry, uh, the, uh, Azure Databricks. So if everyone, yeah. okay, we can spend some money, you know, we can purchase and we can practice that one if everyone agree. Yeah. You know? Same thing. Yeah. yeah. So whatever you are thinking that is wrong. Actually, yesterday we have seen that pricing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That pricing was $80 per month, not for three years. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if you'd like to see that, let me just show you your pricing calculator. Okay, let's go here. Even I have verified later, so how come it is very less? Okay. So then you know. Okay, let's search for Edu database here. Otherwise, I would have purchased that. And yeah, yeah. We yeah. are used, but I realized it is very costly. You can see here. See ya. for one mission, okay? For one server, this is the only one server we have selected. And for pay as you go, it is like 13.39 average per month, okay? Yeah. So if you click on for three years, so it's $80.28 average per month. Oh, if you okay. go with three years, see here, 2,800. Yeah, oh, yeah. So that we, will not, we cannot use this, okay? It's Correct. very costly. That's why we will try to understand uh, Databricks community and whatever possible things we can deliver it from Databricks community. We will try to implement all those things in Databricks community. Wherever, uh, example, I want to schedule jobs and I want to test. So those things not possible in Databricks community for such type of concepts, we will go and create the AJU Databricks. Even what about one year, Molaya? Uh, can you check one year? How much they're charging? Too costly. You can see for $125 oh, average. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Yeah. So that's why we cannot purchase. Understood now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go to our next concept. So as I said, uh, if you want to create Databricks community account, so first we need to access this particular URL, okay? Then once we access this URL, we need to follow two steps process. This is a two step process. One is, first you need to fill your profile details. Profile details means it will ask your first name, last name, mail ID it will ask. That mail ID can be a Gmail, it can be Outlook, okay? It can be anything. Then it can be your office mail ID as well. It can be any mail ID. Your screen got frozen, I think. Is it everybody's having the mission? No, it's fine for me. Yeah, I think so. So I am at here, follow below two steps to get Databricks community account. Okay. Yeah, you I see now. see only the pricing stuff. Yeah, now it's back. Yeah, now it's back. Yeah. Yeah, fine. So here uh, we need to follow two step process as i said first step is we need to pro fill the profile profile means they will ask the purpose you can say i want to implement data migration stuff or data like stuff something and you can tell for which organization you are working you can give some cloud fund is some something like that and you have to give your first name last name and your mail id so these five things are mandatory so once you have given those five details you already mentioned one mail id in this first step so to that particular mail ID, we will get a one uh, verification mail. So we need to click on verification mail. Once you click on verification mail, we can able to reset your password. Here you have entered mail ID. In second step, you are resetting your password with the help of mail ID, which you have typed in step one and whatever password you have resetted in second step, these two you need to use to log in into the Databricks community. If you want to log in, you need to use this particular URL. Okay, so we will try all these things practically in today's session. Next. 
different data mix run times we already discussed that's why let, let me go a little bit fast so set of four components that run on the cluster managed by databricks databricks offer several type of runtime what it means suppose if you select a databricks runtime with machine learning all the machine learning related modules will be installed by default okay when cluster is installed you no need to uh, install the module explicitly example we need ml flow library and tensor flow or some other libraries for machine learning environment so those all libraries you no need to install explicitly by default all these libraries will be installed if you select databricks with machine learning in the same way if you select with uh, databricks with uh, genomics then what happens all biomedical data if you want to process whatever modules you need so all those modules will be available by default so likewise we need to select the appropriate runtime based on our requirement okay so first runtime is this is general runtime for any type of processing you can select this okay example big data analytics okay normal uh, your sales data financial data or some other data normal big data analytics you can go with the databricks runtime you have a databricks runtime for machine learning this is basically you you have some um, you want to implement some models then you need a uh, machine learning environment if you select this particular databricks runtime for machine learning this particular uh, option then what happens it is built on databricks runtime and provides a ready to go environment for machine learning so you can go and directly you can uh, write code for your models you no need to install uh, your required libraries modules all those things so all the required things will be available okay Oh, so ready to go environment for machine learning and data science will be available if you select this runtime and it contains multiple popular libraries including tensorflow keras pytorch and hgboost so all these uh, libraries by default it, it will uh, it will uh, make sure all these are available so suppose if you are selecting this particular runtime now you are trying to execute machine learning modules then what happens suppose you want to execute machine learning code then what happens you need to install all these modules explicitly we will see how to install these things explicitly in case if you don't have these modules okay next so databricks runtime for genomics this is basically it is a version of databricks runtime optimized for working with the genomic and biomedical data if you have any biomedical data okay you are researching on medical data then you you can go with this particular uh, genomics runtime next we have a databricks slide this is basically when you don't worry about your performance and reliability auto scaling all these things you don't want so you just want to execute some sample programs or something like that then you can go with the databricks slide so on with the help of databricks lite runtime you cannot execute your notebooks you can execute only python files and the jar files clear for it okay so this you can use for general purpose for any type of data if you want machine learning environment then you can go with this particular runtime if you want to or like to process uh, biomedical data then you can go with this runtime so for all other purpose where you don't care about your performance reliability and auto scaling and you want to execute some python file or uh, jar file then you can go with the databricks like as i mentioned again i'm mentioning you cannot execute notebooks by using this particular uh, runtime so types of clusters sorry, sorry malia the last one is why can't we execute using the light yeah so because i am not sure about why we cannot use uh, but if you want to execute notebooks it is not available okay okay so the reason why we are not able to execute so if you want to execute notebooks we have other things but this particular data of the slide they are not allowing you to execute notebooks okay so the reason i can think of is databricks like it is not a good performance and reliability and auto scaling if you go with notebooks notebooks are kind of things where you are expecting results immediately right so yeah. it's interactive right interactive means you need results immediately so when you want results immediately you will not get it because it's clearly it is saying don't when you don't need the advanced performance then you can go with the databricks like so it's interact notebooks the interact so whenever you execute piece of code and immediately you will expect a result so it will not uh, perform a better performance that's why it will example you submitted code you have to wait instead of waiting 2 minutes you may need to wait for 5 minutes if okay. you use data that's why simply they are saying don't use data bricks like for notebook okay 
next so types of clusters available in databricks so there are two types of clusters available as we discussed previously all purpose cluster and job cluster so all purpose cluster even we can create it uh, within a databricks community so who who is going to create all purpose cluster so we can create you create an all purpose cluster using ui cli or rest api so we can able to use any of these to create the uh, to create the cluster all purpose cluster in databricks community and you can manually terminate restart an all purpose cluster so this particular cluster we can terminate and restart an all purpose cluster i will show you how we can restart it once you terminate it then you cannot restart okay you have to do either of this you have to terminate or you have to restart. example in databricks community uh, whenever we have installed modules we will restart the cluster okay so when we don't want to run this particular cluster we can terminate it both are possible next multiple users can share such clusters to do collaborative interactive analysis yes, multiple people can execute multiple notebooks on same cluster that i will show you next job cluster so the i said there are two types of clusters available all purpose cluster and job cluster so it's not available in databricks community job cluster is not available in databricks community but this job cluster is available in uh, edu databricks so that's why whenever we want to test our job clusters and all we need to go for go with edu databricks okay clear let me go to next one okay now we'll see the difference between edu databricks and databricks community so these are the difference first thing is in Azure Databricks, you can see the Azure Databricks is hosted on Microsoft Azure. The Databricks community edition is hosted on Image on AWS. Okay. Metadata will store in Azure storage. That is nothing but blob storage here. But here metadata will store in AWS S3. Okay. With the Azure Databricks, the users will have access to required size cluster. What it means? So we can decide the number of worker nodes, we can decide whether we want to enable auto scaling or not, if we are going to enable auto scaling, how many minimum nodes we want, how many maximum nodes we want, what size of nodes we want, whether we want eight cores and 64 GB servers we want, or 16 core, 128 GB servers we want. So all options users can decide, the size of the cluster users can decide. But here with the Databricks community edition, the users will have access to 15 GB uh, cluster. Okay, uh, it's not a more than this, and you cannot reduce or decrease. It's a fixed. You can able to get only 15 GB cluster, meaning only one server you will get. That server size, uh, that server will have a 15 GB memory. Okay, next. In Azure Databricks, clusters will allow you to configure auto scaling. Okay, cluster auto scale option is not available. Sorry, so it's wrong. Then, so one second, let me correct it. Yeah, you can see here cluster termination can be configured. So here cluster auto scale option is available, but here cluster auto scale option is not available. So in Azure Databricks, we can enable the auto scaling option, but in Databricks community, we cannot enable auto scaling option. Next, cluster termination can be configurable. We can say we want to shut down this particular cluster in 15 minutes or 20 minutes. We can tell that particular time. Okay, we can able to tell that particular time. Next. Cluster termination is not configurable. It's fixed for 120 minutes. So if you are not going to submit any job on this cluster for two hours, automatically this Databricks community cluster will shut down. But here you can configure whether you want to shut down in 15 minutes or 30 minutes or one hour, two hours. Okay, next. Jobs can schedule. In Azure Databricks, we can schedule jobs. But in Databricks community, jobs cannot schedule. We cannot schedule the jobs. Next. Databricks pricing start at $99 per month. Okay, here Databricks communication is free of charge. Okay, you are not going to make any charges here. You are not going to pay anything here. Okay, clear? Any doubts as of now? So now we will go ahead and we will see how to create Databricks community. Yeah, clear, Malaya. Yeah, okay, Malaya. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So now what we need to do, first step is, let's go and create a one Outlook mail ID. Okay, come here. Outlook or Gmail doesn't matter. 
Okay, let me go with Outlook. Now, please. Malaya, uh, for, yep. the, for example, if you want to practice anything on the Azure Databricks side, uh, hmm. what is the minimum configuration we can select and continue? Yes, sir, also one or so. right? Sorry? See, come here and you see your example. The price. So you, you want to try Azure Databricks with a single server. Okay. So okay. single server you want to go. And if you want to like per hour, how much you can see your charges. Here you can see hourly charges. So hourly, how much you are going to pay? You can see something 0 0.28 dollars, meaning. If you go with four hours, it's one point twelve dollars. Example, if you go with one day, six dollars. If you go with the one day, six dollars. Instead of going with days or months, let's go with hours. I want to go with like four hours. Okay. If you go with four hours, you can see one dollar. Okay. So not only to Azure Databricks, you are going to make a payments to Databricks units. Okay. So it's a processing unit. Okay, processing capacity here for this particular uh, database unit also you need to make a separate payment here. Suppose if you're using four hours your server means so this particular unit also will run for four hours. So meaning 1.65 plus 1.0. So total monthly cost you can see here 2.77. Okay. If you go with four hours, okay. four hours. Okay. Because normally we need we if when we do an auto scale we should uh, set minimum nodes and maximum nodes right so we'll that can all... at least uh, some so some how many machines can select how many machines we can select suppose if you are trying to make like a driver node and a worker node and all minimum you can put zero worker nodes but yeah. if you want example auto scaling then you can say minimum worker nodes are one and maximum worker maximum nodes are three. three. Okay. okay. You have something three plus so one driver node total four servers. So four servers if you run four hours then four point four six plus six point six zero total or uh, some eleven dollars meaning some Malaya, approximately some seven. Yeah. I have one doubt Malaya. If you have only one virtual machine then it would be mm -hmm. only either it will be driver node or worker node right? See drive previously what used to happen is your manager is simply he will he use it to sit. Only workers use it to work. Nowadays, what is happening? Manager also working. Okay. Likewise, okay. driver is ready to work all the time. Okay. If the workers are available, a driver will split the work to workers. But when we don't have a workers, what happens? Even if we have a workers, driver also will work simultaneously along with workers. No, actually, my question is Malaya. Suppose if you want to play with like a driver and worker like that, you know, mm -hmm. so this virtual machine is a matter or it, is, it doesn't matter. Even if you have a one also, it will be a performance a driver and a worker like that. I'm a bit confused about the about, uh, no, concept here. You need to understand yeah. driver, worker. Yeah. So driver is going to take entire task and it will uh, divide the entire task to sub task and it will submit on a workers. Yeah. Okay. Not only this driver job is not only dividing big task to small task and uh, sitting idle. Okay. What driver has to do? Driver will think, okay, I have two workers. I need to give uh, two tasks to two workers. Mm -hmm. It is not going to divide big task into two small tasks. It is going to divide big task into three small tasks. Why? Because here actually workers are two and you need to think about the driver also. Driver also going to work along with the workers now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now what happens if the drivers are not available? Even if you receive, if driver received big task, driver itself will do all the work that workers has to do. Okay. In this case, what happens? You don't require workers now. Driver itself will do all the jobs for you. Okay. Okay, got it. Or still confusion? Feel free to yeah, ask. Yeah. No, I, what, where I, I got confused is this driver and uh, worker is based on this virtual machine. I thought like that. So if no, I have no. a poor virtual machine, so manager, would... workers, okay. all the people are humans only in the same way. Here also it's a server. So okay. when you go to Azure DataWorks, when you create a cluster, it will ask a driver node what what server you want, what kind of configuration server you want, worker oh. nodes kind okay. of server configurations you want maybe 
driver you want little bit big because you are going to select only one so you want workers small workers multiple example 14 gb ram and something like that. okay the okay. same machine will be splitted like a worker and a driver right for example yes. here we have a four cpu right mm. okay four C cpu will be divided like a driver and worker correct uh, I'm you, sorry, Malaya, if you, I'm got confused. Not, don't worry. See, I will try to clarify your doubt. So yeah. you are thinking is you are thinking this driver as a two different things. Why you see one human? You cannot uh, say he is the worker, he is the manager. Yeah, so yeah. he is performing, but you cannot divide him into two parts. So same okay. server will do whatever worker you use it to do. Example, you are manager. You are okay. managing two workers. Yeah. what usually you do is you will receive a task and you will tell them hey, you do this this they will do it and they will give you the report mm -hmm. that was happening now what happens now yeah. when you receive the task you are also working along with them you are going to tell hey, you do this ta task i i have to do this particular task so you are going to collaborate all these three people work and you will submit this yeah. is second third one is if the workers are not available mm -hmm. now who is going to do entire thing you will receive you are going to work as a worker now because okay. actually you are a driver but you are working as a driver worker you are driver but you are still working as a worker because okay. Okay. So there is no workers you have to perform everything okay okay uh, concept wise i'm completely uh, fine uh, malaya but where i got confused is this uh, four we have selected uh, one virtual machine and four virtual machine right so where this i got confused four trades in uh, same right. okay yeah, yeah these are four trades Okay, okay. Not four missions, okay, four threads in same okay. mission. Parallelly, you are going to process. Example, I have opened four tabs or three tabs. So yeah. four different threads are going to run simultaneously. Correct. Okay. Like that. So, so the four, four threads, threads uh, act as four. like a driver or an worker, right? Correct. Yes. Threads yes. will be acted. Okay, that's it. That's it. Yeah, simple. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, four point four six. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. No, no, central yeah. field. So don't worry you have to see many people what happens is now when i upload this video in youtube many people will have a lot of confusion like you so they will get clarity on this yeah, so yeah, you yeah. try to understand as much as you can and if you have any doubt feel free to ask yeah okay. because if you are not clear i will try to give you more examples so that at one point in time you will understand once you understand Definitely. you won't yeah yeah if you remember now tomorrow you will forget things yeah yeah Okay, so here 4.46, it's a 6.60. Okay, now uh, we are going to focus on now this particular thing. Let's create a one outlook mail ID. Okay, let me go inside here, Office 365 login. So click on this. So here you can see create free account. I want to create a free account. Click on create free account. I am going to give here cloud funded database community DBC database community. Click next. I will enter password. Click next. First name I will give my name. I will use something. Click next. Okay, let me give some details here. Okay, I have given something like this. You can say today date is what October 9. Okay, October 9, 2020, India. Click next. 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 Okay, this is my mail ID. So I will take that mail ID for creating my Databricks community. Cloud Pandit DBC at the rate Outlook. Something went wrong. Click here to sign up. Okay, no issue. Let me log in again. Outlook.com. Click sign in. 
Okay, now let's log in and check out Kunde database community. Dot. Okay, let's go to incognito mode. Here we will try to do. Sometimes we will have issue with. The... So let me sign in. I think it is created already. Cloud Monday database community outlook. Let us. Okay, you can see I am able to log in into my account. Okay, so Cloud Pandit DBC Databricks community. Now I want to create our Databricks account. So come here, example, you want to say here Databricks. You can say Databricks community try. Okay, so you will get a link directly. Date try Databricks. Click on that. Yeah, they said two uh, two step process. So first step is to fill our details. We need to fill the details. Let me fill. So, so I can say your mail ID. Databricks community. Okay, at the rate outlook. So what is your intent to do something building data like our data pipelines? What is your role data engineer? You can say. Okay, next. What I want to do, cloud pundit. I want to type cloud pundit here. Okay. Just click sign up. Once you click sign up, here you can see community edition Databricks platform for free trial. If you click on free trial, it will be like a, a 14 days free. Okay, you can see 14 days full of futures trial okay it excludes cloud charges meaning cloud charges you need to make a, uh, you need to make a cloud charges now click get, get started with the database we need a community just click on community edition. now first step is completed with this we have completed the step one so now you can see time to check your mail id now you go to here to check your mail so your mail will not be available here. It will go to Jenk emails. Click on Jenk emails. You can see here it will be available. Now come here. You can see this link. Click on this. Now you are going to reset your password. I am going to reset my password here. Click reset password. Okay, so now uh, you see this is the Databricks workspace. Okay, so with in, like uh, this Databricks community account, I want to log in. Okay, how to log in? You can see I came outside here. Uh, first thing is you need to access something like this. You can say Databricks community edition, edition login. You can say so then immediately we'll get a first link for Databricks community edition login. Click on that link. You need to type your um, mail ID and the resetted password. So I'm going to enter my mail ID here. You can see cloud funding. 
okay, dbc the direct outlook .com, okay it's basically outlook .com. and here i want to type in but it will work with your gmail as well now you can click sign in okay so now you can see i am able to log in here if you look at this one i i am able to see here also workspace what happens is when you reset your password automatically it will redirect to databricks community workspace but if you want to like log out and log in again this is how we can log in okay i have shown you how to log in as well now we will see what all things are available in databricks community and what things we can do here so as i mentioned jobs you cannot schedule you can see first step see what it is saying learn more about jobs for access please upgrade your databricks subscription so meaning with this databricks community you cannot schedule jobs next come to cluster cluster means group of servers so here we are going to create so here you can see job cluster but you don't have any option because you are not going to create when job clusters is going to create job clusters are going to create when you schedule a jobs but scheduling job is not available scheduling job is not available means you cannot see job cluster meaning job cluster will not be uh, available in database community now come to all purpose cluster click on create see here you can see all purpose cluster and job cluster but job cluster is not available because job cluster will will create when you schedule a job but here you cannot schedule job okay now click on all purpose cluster click on create cluster so here first thing is you need to give the name for your cluster i am giving my name is cloud pandit demo next this is the like whatever we have discussed right so this is what uh, this is a databricks runtime you can see okay databricks runtime so i will go with 7.2 scalar okay so if you want to go with ml you can go with ml okay so 7.2 i will go with 7.2 here you can see next so which version of python it is selecting python 3 okay if you want to go with any other things you can able to go ml and gp okay this is ml only ml here genomics also will come here if you select this but i am going without ml and without genomics i am just going with 7.2 okay only i want a normal runtime data next here as i said auto scaling option is not available you can see next point is databricks community so as i said cluster termination is fixed for two hours meaning 120 minutes it's fixed for two hours you cannot reconfigure example you want to terminate this cluster after 15 minutes or after 30 minutes that is not possible and here you cannot select your instance server configuration as well you can see the fixed server is one driver that's nothing but a one mission which has 15.3 gb memory and two cores and one dbu okay now they have increased the dbu power i think previously it used to be like 0 0.7 something i think it's based on uh, runtime let me just check it so let's go to old versions which we used to use yeah whatever we use doesn't matter but you can see 15 gb memory two cores and one dbu databricks unit okay the processing capacity per unit so it's a one driver one mission and you can see here uh, us west 2c all these are the availability zone availability zones this concept comes only in aws next click on spark if you want to give any configuration spark configuration you can give those things here now just click create cluster to create your databricks community cluster. how you can do that it's from uh, aws so come to spark ui okay let's wait for one or two minutes so that cluster will up once cluster is up you can come to spark ui to see this mission is created where okay this mission will create from a aws that is aws virtual mission okay ec2 instance elastic compute cloud you will see that as well let's wait for two minutes Thank you. 
can see some event logs as well. Who has started this cluster? Suppose if we have terminated this cluster, uh, admin or infra team they will come to know okay who has uh, terminated. Okay, in uh, in the case suppose when you are working by mistake if you shut down or if you terminate, uh, don't hesitate to inform okay because they will come to know any of who has terminated, who has shut down all these things. Okay, because this will see. If you want to install anything, any library, you can able to install it here. Okay, I will show you how to install those things as well. Here you can attach notebooks. Suppose if you have any notebook, you can select those notebooks here. As we have not created any notebooks, that's why it is not listing our notebooks. If you have created notebooks, it will show all the notebooks. Whatever notebook you want to attach, you can attach those things. Okay. Okay, here it will show all the attached uh, notebooks for it. Okay, all the attached notebooks it will show. If you want to remove particular notebook, then you can able to do that. Park UI. Here we will be able to see driver logs. If you want to see this cluster logs, you can able to see. Here you can able to see our cluster UI. All the configurations that you can able to see. Just refresh. Sometimes it will keep on rotating like that, but cluster will be so refresh and check the things. What is still creating? Let's wait for one or two minutes. Yeah, it is up now. Okay. Now if you come to Spark UI, okay, you can able to see it's a EC2. What is what it means? Compute.amazonaws.com. So it is from AWS. Okay. Next, if you come to Spark Cluster UI Master, okay, here you can see stages. Basically, so all the Spark UI you can able to monitor from here. Okay, how many partitions created, how many stages it's created. Okay, Spark. Okay, don't worry, we will discuss all these things. Next, you can see Spark UI. On Spark UI. Um, the Spark UI or Spark Cluster UI, both the same. And what else you want to see? Driver logs. So you can able to see logs here. I want to show you something. One second. We should be able to see some kind of a configuration. Yeah. So here you can see event logs, everything, okay? Cluster creation requested by this person, and you can see cluster is running, driver is healthy. Okay, now, this one is, I want to see environment variables, click on environment variables. I think here you can able to see. Yeah, here. So Java version, Java home set, all those things you can able to see. A lot of configuration, environment variables, everything you can able to see. Okay. If you want to overwrite any of this, you are, how you will overwrite here? Yes. Okay, you just click edit. Cluster, come to Spark, you can put all those Spark configurations or environment variables if you want to change something. So you can able to do all those changes. So environment variables you can change here. Spark configurations you can add here. Okay, so this is how we need to create a uh, cluster in database community. And this is the dashboard where you can see all visually. That's what we have discussed, right? Visually, we will be able to see, uh, like if you want to create example notebook, you can create notebook from here. Or if you want to create any table, you can create. If you want to create any cluster, we can create. If you want to import any data, we can import data. If you want to create blank notebook, we can create. So this is the kind of a, a dashboard from here you can able to see visually the notebook if you want you have to click here if you want to upload some data you have to click here or something like that click on home so here you can see if you want to create any notebook all those things again possible from here so all these things we will discuss in a upcoming session okay don't worry any questions friends
clear on me i'm okay yes ma'am yeah clear okay 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 then if no question that's all for today yeah thank you thank you thank, thank you. you thank you bye yeah.